I think I got some cilantro stuck right there, huh? Okay, I think we're good. Being a full-time food blogger, I am always testing out new recipes. But every now and then, one completely blows me away. And that's exactly the case with today's recipe for these Baja fish tacos. Tender and flaky fish gets beer battered and fried to create a gorgeous golden crust. Then they're topped with a crunchy cilantro lime slaw and a creamy sauce. One of the many things I love about this dish is that you can easily prep ahead the cilantro slaw and the lime crema. That way all you have to do is fry up your fish on a busy weeknight. You can either mix them up in the container you'll be storing them in if you're prepping ahead, or combine them in bowls if you're serving immediately. For the slaw, you'll want to grab a large bowl or container and add a 14 ounce bag of coleslaw mix, or about four cups of shredded red or green cabbage, one fourth cup of finely chopped cilantro, one fourth cup of thinly sliced red onion, one to two jalapeno peppers that have been finely diced. You can always leave these out too if you'd prefer not to have any spice. The juice of one lime, which comes out to roughly one and a half tablespoons, and half a teaspoon of salt to taste. Mix this all together until it's combined, and then refrigerate until ready to use. To get a more authentic tasting lime crema sauce, you'll want to use Mexican crema. It has a slightly sweeter and saltier taste than sour cream. But if you can only find sour cream, it's a great alternative. You'll want to add half a cup of this to a medium-sized bowl, along with one tablespoon of lime juice, half a teaspoon of lime zest, Remember to always zest your limes before juicing. And 1 8 to 1 4 teaspoon of salt to taste. Remember, this can vary quite a bit depending on if you use Mexican crema or sour cream. So don't be scared to give it a little taste test. Store the crema in the refrigerator until you're ready to serve. All right, we've got the slaw and the cream sauce chilling. Now it's just time to fry up that fish. Since we're gonna be beer battering and then frying it and handling it a lot, you really want a nice firm fish so that it holds its shape. It's also best to look for one with a mild flavor. My personal preference to use is cod for both of these reasons, but you can always try out tilapia or even sea bass. Cut the fish into three inch long by one inch wide strips. To make sure the batter sticks to the fish, you'll wanna dab it with a paper towel to remove any excess moisture. Then set it aside while preparing the batter. Grab a large bowl that will be big enough for all of the fish and add one cup of flour. You can either use a regular all-purpose or a gluten-free one-to-one blend. One teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and one fourth teaspoon of black pepper. Whisk this together until combined. And now for the secret ingredient, a Mexican style lager. I know, I know, I know, if you are not a beer drinker, do not worry, I am not myself. I'm more of a tequila kind of gal, but I promise you, you will not taste the beer in there at all. All you will notice is that fish tastes freaking incredible, guys. So don't pass this up. Also, if you happen to be gluten-free, no worries. You can always use either a gluten-free beer, chicken broth, white wine, or even ginger ale. Pour in one cup of a Mexican beer, such as Dos Equis, and stir until everything is well combined. Add the fish strips to the batter and toss until they're completely coated. Instead of deep frying, we're going to be slightly healthier today by using a little less oil. But one thing to note is that you do want to find an oil with a relatively high smoke point, such as avocado, peanut, or even vegetable oil. Add 1 4 to 1 3rd cup of the oil to a large cast iron skillet or nonstick skillet over medium heat. You want enough oil to totally cover the bottom of the skillet. Using tongs, remove a fish strip from the batter, making sure every side is covered, and carefully add it to the hot oil. Add more strips to the skillet in a single layer, with at least half to one inch of space between each one. Cook the fish for two to three minutes or until the crust turns a gorgeous golden color and then carefully flip it. The fish can get a little delicate once cooked, so use a spatula to ensure the crust doesn't stick to the bottom of the skillet. Continue cooking for another two to three minutes on the other side. You'll know they're done when the fish flakes easily with a fork. Once cooked, remove the fish from the skillet and place on a paper towel lined plate to drain. Add another tablespoon or two of oil to the skillet 
and continue cooking the remaining fish strips. You may have to cook the fish in two to three batches depending on the size of your skillet. Time to serve them up. The traditional way to serve Baja fish tacos is on corn tortillas, but we all know that corn tortillas have a really bad reputation for falling apart on you just as you load them all up. So a quick trick I like to do is to add a little bit of coconut oil to a skillet. Yep, coconut oil gives them so much flavor. And then toast the tortillas over medium heat for about a minute or so per side. Okay, now it's really time to serve them up. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is taking me back to my, to my trip to Southern California that I took a few years ago with that crispy fish, that crunchy cilantro slaw, and that creamy sauce drizzled on top, guys. These are so freaking good, but if you need a few more Mexican-inspired dishes, I have got you covered. Be sure to check out these recipes right over here. Thanks so much for hanging out. I will see you in the next one.